this video is about how to combine multiple different kinds of data manipulation together to get a single combined result using dplyr. And the general idea behind how we combine multiple steps uh, in both data manipulation and programming more general uh, is that we do each action, uh, but we do it in a sequential order. And so for data manipulation, we might first filter the data and then select some columns from it and then arrange it or something like that. There are two general approaches to doing this. And the one that this video is going to cover is called intermediate variables. And the idea behind using intermediate variables is that we repeat a series of steps. The first is that we run whatever command, a data manipulation step in this case, we want to run. We then store the output of that command into a variable. And we then use that variable later in the code, often on the next line, as the input for the next step. So the next step in the data manipulation in our case. And then we store that into a variable and we repeat. And so each time we create a new variable and then we use it as the input for our next line. And so let's look at an example uh, using the approaches we've learned so far. And so we will try to uh, get some data from the portal project. Let's go ahead and set this up. So we're using dplyr. So we want to run library parentheses dplyr in order to load the library that we need to do our analyses. And then we'll keep using the surveys table. So we want to create the variable surveys and assign it the output from read.csv, parentheses, and then quotation marks, and the name of the table of the file that we want to load. And we can see down here uh, next to me, it's surveys.csv. And so we've got our surveys table here. So let's do an analysis that combines three of the things that we've learned how to do. Uh, filtering the data, sorting the data using a range, and uh, selecting some columns uh, from the data that we want in the end. And we'll do this uh, by trying to get all of the data on Dipodomi's Spectabilis. That's the giant kangaroo rat again. Uh, capital D, capital S is its species code. And then we're going to get that data only where it has uh, weights that are not null. We're going to sort that data by year. And uh, then we're only going to return the year and the weight column. So that's the sort of core data that we need for analysis. And so we're going to get it extracted from the table uh, that we have as a starting point. We can do these particular steps in any order. Let's go in the order that I described them. So we'll start by filtering the data to only get DS species uh, with weights. And so we need to create a variable name here. And I'll go ahead and call it DS data, since it's the data for Dipodomius spectabilis. And then we're going to assign it the results from our first data analysis step. And so we want DS with non-null weights. And so if you remember, we're going to get that using the filter command, the filter function, some parentheses. And then the first argument in this function is always the table that we want to work on. So that's surveys. And then we want uh, to set the species ID equal to DS. So species underscore ID, two equals signs, and then in quotes DS, because this is a string. And then if you'll remember, we use not is.na in order to get the values that have non-null weights. So that's exclamation mark, is.na, parentheses, and then the name of the column, which is weight. And so then we can run this line, and I often recommend 
uh, running code in small chunks rather than writing it all at once because it's easier to find out when something gets when something's gone wrong. So we'll go ahead and run this line. Uh, it ran without an error. We can see we've got a new table here, this intermediate step. And if we click on that table, uh, we can see that it's only DS in the species ID and the weights are all not null. So that looks good. We've managed to accomplish the first step in our process. Now we want to take the output that we've just gotten and use it as the input for the next step in our data analysis and our data manipulation. And so we need a new variable name, and this is the step where we're going to sort all of that data by year. So let's call it DS data by year. That seems reasonable. And then we'll assign it the output of another dplyr function. That function is a range. That's how we sort things. So a range, parentheses. And now the key is that instead of using surveys, which hasn't changed, that's still the original data set, we want to work with DS data. So that's the table we want to work on because that's the table that we've already filtered. So here we're going to put DS data because we want to now arrange this thing uh, that we've already made that's just DS with no weights. And we want to sort it by year. Okay. And so now we could go ahead and run this line of code and make sure that it's working. If we click on the table, we can now see uh, that it's DS. The weights are all there and everything is sorted by year. Great. And then the last step was that we only wanted to have the year and weight columns uh, left at the end. And so uh, we could maybe now call this DS weight by year that communicates both what the weights are, their dipodomies weights, and they're sorted by year. And then we can assign that the output of a select statement, because select is how we choose a subset of columns. And then again, what we want to do is we want to use this last variable that we created, the previous step in this data analysis pipeline as our input. And so our select function is going to work on this sorted, filtered data frame to give us the results that we want. And the two columns that we decided we wanted to select were the year and weight columns. And so now if we run this line of code and click on this data frame, we'll see that we now have the year and the weight column only uh, from this table. Everything's sorted by year, and we know that these are Dipodomies spectabilis weights. And we can then check to see that everything is working properly uh, by clicking on the broom here to clear out the global environment and running source with echo. And we'll see that everything has run with no errors, and we get out the final result properly that we wanted at the end. And so that's the basic idea behind how we can combine multiple data manipulation steps into a single set of code using intermediate variables. We run a single step in the data analysis we store it in a variable. This is one of these intermediate variables. We then use that intermediate variable in our analysis for the next step in our data manipulation pipeline and store its results in a new intermediate variable. We then use that intermediate variable as the input for the next step in our data manipulation pipeline. And we repeat that until we're done 
and we get out the final result that we want to work with.